Hi everyone. Today I'm going to be looking at a Zauer 80 and uh, they made another model called the Zauer 90. These are quite unusual rifles. The way they lock is distinct. Some of you may be familiar with them. And the story of the Zauer 80 and 90 actually begins with the Mauser 98, which as you know is kind of the standard that all guns have to measure up to and um, so what do we want to talk about that's how the Mauser opens we all know that and it I mean it was a military firearm the, the purpose of of the action was warfare um, so it always had to work and tolerances have to be less precise because of dirt and battlefield conditions. Anyway, um, after the Second World War, uh, bolt actions started becoming far more popular in the United States and generally. Prior to that, um, lever actions were, were the most popular hunting rifles in the United States and uh, maybe elsewhere as well. Anyhow, so as people discovered the bolt actions, um, they discovered the Mauser 98. Uh, this is made by Wesley Richards. Um, it's actually, this particular rifle was made for the Earl of Egmont, which is kind of interesting. And I'm, I'll do a video on this, on this particular rifle. It's in 318 um, Accelerated Express. It's a takedown and um, it has night sights and um, you know different features. This is how it takes down. Anyway, we'll go into that another time. But what I wanted to show you was the action. So you can see, I mean, it's a great action. We all know how they work. And um, one thing that I can show you is we tip this action and nothing happens. Uh, this action has to be closed. I can get it to, I can get it to close probably. This can be a challenge for my cameraman. I can get it to move forward with momentum. But you can see it's, it, this is a military action. So, so that's that. So now we move to post-war Germany, um, roll the clock forward to the 60s and 70s. There are a lot of Mausers around that can be converted, um, but the gun factories, in this case Zauer, uh, decide that they want something different from a Mauser 98. And so they look at, well, what can we make different? We know we can't really make it better because uh, the Mauser 98 is so good. So uh, the Mauser and Zauer and others, um, you know, started looking at different ways of solving the locking problem. And I'm just gonna shift back to the Mauser 98 and we can see here that the bolt locks by way of, just get my calipers here, of these two lugs. So that's how the bolt locks. It, and of course it turns and, and that's easy to understand. Um, that means the bolts have, the lugs have to ride over the cartridges which are stacked here, which causes a whole bunch of friction and it's, it's just not a smooth action, nor was it intended to be a smooth action. It's a, it's a, like I said, it's a military gun. Anyway, so back to the whatever 60s, I guess they must have started designing the Zauer 80. Um, and then uh, I think most people bought them in the 70s and 80s. They just discontinued these um, this year. So I guess they were quite popular. Um, I don't know how many were produced. Anyhow, uh, this, this action, well, first of all, you can see no visible means of locking the bolt. There's nothing visible. There's a bolt handle. Um, some 22s lock on the bolt handle, um, but that's not going to work for this gun, which is a 300 Winchester Magnum. And they made them in 458 and a whole bunch of other calibers. So to remove the bolt, just pull the trigger back, you know, standard procedure. And here we go. So now the action is locked. Uh, so then people, well, I mean, how does it accomplish locking and how possibly can a bolt be that smooth? Well, it's it's a pipe in a tube. So, for example, it, it I'll do that again. It just closes it. It closes itself. There's no resistance. 
and I didn't put any oil on this thing for a long time. Anyhow, so um, how is locking accomplished? Well, we'll remove the bolt and <clears throat> you can probably see on the back of the action um, these lugs, some people call them struts, uh, actually uh, uh, different gun people use different expressions to describe these struts that come out of the ball body. There are three of them. And um, now I'm, I'm going to uh, take apart the bolt and it's quite simple. You just depress, you depress this, this lever, push it in and then rotate the bolt handle um, in the direction that you would to lock the bolt if it were in the gun. So we just push this, rotate, and there we have it. Now you can see they're just flopping around because there's, they're not controlled by anything. You can see the lugs. So these lugs are sitting inside the action back here. And as the pressure from ignition of the cartridge moves backwards through the bolt body, um, these lugs prevent the bolt from moving. Now you're going to hear a lot of rumors and stories if, if you watch this video, maybe you've watched others. And people talk about, frankly, how bad this system is. And it's not... I wouldn't say really bad. I mean, of course, the guns have been in production for a long time, so obviously it's it's not unsafe. Uh, you know, these are not fixed lugs, as 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 is the case on the Mauser 98. But nevertheless, um, their objective was to accomplish a very smooth bolt. And I mean, the engineering and milling that's involved in making these Zowers, it's incredible. So. Um, they 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 are not rigid um i've heard stories about the the recesses that the lugs fit in becoming jammed with dirt or whatever but that can happen with any bolt action if you stuff a whole bunch of straw or sand or or something in a mauser 98 uh you can't turn that bolt either you know, you probably have more camming power than you do with the zauer 80 or 90. um but anyway what i'm saying is um you know it it's possible to get every bolt action not to work so then um, another criticism is it it's overly complicated the trigger is complicated I've taken that apart too I, I don't recommend anybody doing that and um, my overall impression of the Zauer is it's it's a superbly made firearm and um, you know how it is when you're sitting in a tree stand and you have nothing to think about or in life generally, uh, you tend to think about small things, unimportant things. And one of the things you tend to look at is your, your firearm. So the fact that the bolt is very smooth and that, that the whole gun is kind of flawless um, and it makes a big noise when you pull the trigger and then whatever you're shooting at falls down, uh, this is kind of what we're looking for. So uh, these criticisms against this rifle are probably valid from an engineering point of view but if we all bought rifles based on engineering nobody would own anything other than a Mauser 98 because since that I mean there have been some copies and, and I guess um, some of them have maybe better features or steel but the basic action of a Mauser 98 can't really be improved upon in a meaningful way so we're way past as I say cave and fire and uh, that's actually the fun of gun collecting and hunting um, and owning something like this is is terrific by the way they were sold by Colt for a while um, I had one in uh, 458 they, they made an African uh, model which had some kind of unusual wood uh, I can't remember the name anyway great rifle super accurate oh and in terms of accuracy I mean, these are all sub-minute of angle rifles, and um, I've never had any jam. I actually, um, I've never had a problem with the with the Zauer at all. So I thought I would show you this rifle. I'm going to spin it around because they did everything to perfection. You even have, you know, remarkable milling and polishing on the action flat here with the name, and um, these are some kind of Williams sights. 
I guess they could be better, but um, they work. Uh, the stock, European walnut. Somehow in the 70s, there wasn't much good walnut around. I don't know. Um, obviously, the trees were there. There's Turkish walnut all over the place now. But at that time, not so. Anyhow, uh, they stopped making these. I think if you come across one, you should probably buy one if you can spare the money because I don't think they're going to go down in value. And all the things you read about the action and the locking, which now you've seen it, and I think it's easy to understand. I don't think that with these lugs extended, um, anything's going to go wrong anytime soon. Uh, is it the best locking in the world? Maybe not. Of course, it's, it's at the rear of the action, so people will talk about case stretch and all these other things. But I think the people that buy these guns, they just go to the gun store and buy their ammunition. I, I'm not sure they're rushing to reload, um, which is a fantastic thing to do. But anyway, um, there it is, Zauer 80, Zauer 90, and it has, I probably forgot to say, a terrific um, removable magazine. And some removable magazines, especially the modern ones, are terrible. I mean, apparently they're very strong, but they don't, they don't look very strong. Um, this is all steel. I mean, it's a substantial assembly just on its own. And um, this does not have a set trigger. Some of them do that you push forward on. I saw a couple with double set triggers. This is the magnum action. Then there's kind of a standard action and then a small action in 308 and 22250, I think. Um, the small ones are kind of cool. I don't have one right now where I'd show it to you. Uh, so yeah, um, outstanding piece of engineering and workmanship. I, I'm not sure you'll find better. And like any gun, it's a lot of fun to shoot. So thanks for watching.